Among the unique characteristics of Soviet-era aircraft are their robustness. Sturdy frames and tough undercarriage were a fundamental part of Soviet design strategy to enable aircraft to survive a potential nuclear war and deploy to irregular or semi-prepared airfields. Like all Antonov's planes, this one was designed to land not only on paved, but also on unpaved airfields. This explains the number of chassis. And respectively, the frame is large. This all has to be buffered during the impact stress during landing. It has to be distributed, and the number of chassis was designed respectively. However, not only had the aircraft to be able to survive tough landings, but the airfields had to survive the giant's weight plunging onto them too. The plane's payload is a whopping 250 metric tons. The Antonov 225 has an increased capacity landing gear system with 32 wheels, some of which are steerable. It was designed so the aircraft could turn on small runways. On each side, there are seven pairs of wheels, plus two front landing gears with two wheels each, explains Grigorenka Maxim, who is in charge of maintenance on the Mriya. There are seven rows of the main chassis. They are special because, despite of the big size of this plane, the last four rows are rotary racks. Despite its dimensions, the plane can turn round in a small place with minimum radius. When the plane is towed, these wheels can turn as well. In the tiny cockpit, conventional instruments move the control surfaces hydraulically, and the throttles for the six massive turbofan engines are still manual. The cockpit opens onto a corridor where the crew and technicians can rest during a long mission. Dmitry Antonov has worked for 22 years at Antonov since retiring as a military pilot and instructor. He has flown nearly every Antonov-designed plane, including this one, the most massive of them all. This aircraft, Antonov-225, also Antonov-124, Antonov-7274, Antonov-148, 158, and another one aircraft. It is a unique experience to be at the cockpit controls of this one-of-a-kind plane. I'm driving the biggest aircraft in the world, it's just only this one. But for normal control, it's not, not easy, but uh, it's not so hard. It's, um, you have uh, all control and uh, uh, you have big team flying with you. Uh, we are working and have a good team spirit and everybody uh, trying to help and working for captain for, uh, to uh, uh, make a safe flight. His crew of pilots, engineers, mechanics and technicians must all know the AN-225 in great detail. They must be autonomous so that wherever they land they can troubleshoot any problems on their own. Nobody knows this aircraft. We have to, after landing, we have to make a loading, offloading, fueling, and maybe if we have some problem with equipment to uh, make uh, small maintenance or repair something. That's why all, uh, totally, usually we are flying 18, 20 person on this aircraft. It, uh, we have two cabin here, just its pilot cabin, and have a uh, technician's cabin in the rear side. Um, and enough space to uh, feel like home here. He has come to know every corner of the cavernous aircraft, whose vast spaces are remarkable. It's totally, we have six beds. It's um, good. Good uh, for uh, who make a uh, this decision to prepare for long flight uh, and um, uh, uh, to sleep here, to uh, take a dinner. All uh, also, we have small kitchen here, 
uh, to uh, prepare coffee, tea or uh, heat catering. And here we have big space uh, for just, it's simply space for, um, we can walk here and also we are um, keeping here some spare parts for our um, navigation equipment for um, all other system. You can see it's equipment, navigation equipment, fire protection system, and also in, it's the finish. We can uh, proceed from here to top of aircraft. Actually placing a load inside such a massive aircraft was a huge challenge. So designers had an internal crane built inside the cargo hold. It's uh, almost 44 meters long. It's uh, six meters wide and four, uh, more than four meters high. Uh, inside you can see um, everything what needs to load the aircraft. It's uh, uh, loading equipment to crane uh, to take uh, any kind of cargo. We have um, uh, equipment to fix aircraft, uh, fix uh, this cargo inside compartment and also some spare parts, uh, spare wheel um, and uh, our, for example, here it's a tow bar because it's uh, need to sometimes to towing aircraft on ground. Here it's door uh, to, through, through this door we can proceed to technicians, uh, technicians uh, uh, compartment. It's not connecting with pilot cabin, but uh, it's the same, um, uh, quite enough space uh, to stay our technicians during the flight. Remarkably, there is a lot of space that goes unused. The loadmasters are also catered for, with ample space for dining, sleeping and passing the hours in flight. It's a small kitchen here to prepare and uh, it's a place where the technician sitting during takeoff and landing. And the back side you see 11 beds. It's good uh, for rest. A kneeling undercarriage and a folding nose loading ramp are the heavy lift hallmarks of the AN225. It literally loads and unloads oversized cargo through its nose and kneels using retractable nose gear, allowing deliveries to drive directly into the cargo bay. Several small suburban houses or 80 mid-sized cars can fit inside the cargo bay. There were other major ways the aircraft differed from its smaller brother and from every other aircraft around the world. It is the one and only such aircraft in the world, dwarfing the Boeing 747 and outlifting the C-5 Galaxy transporter. And with regard to the forebody, almost nothing was changed if we compare AN-124 to AN-225. And, of course, in view of the larger capacity with regard to the length of the center body and the wings, the plane's carrying capacity was increased to 250 tons maximum. That's all. <laughs> the wingspan of the aircraft was extended from 73 to 88 meters, and the wing profile was modified too to give it extra lift at the junction with the fuselage and greater widths to house even more fuel. An incredible 300,000 kilos worth. The extra fuel was needed to power the six Ivchenka Progress D-18T engines, built in the Soviet Union, now Russia. Each of these engines provides 51,600 pounds of thrust, enough to push the aircraft up to a takeoff speed of over 850 kilometers per hour. The wing profile and thrust gives enough power to get the 280-ton aircraft and all its fuel and cargo, a stunning total of up to 640 tons, into the air to a cruising speed of 800 kilometers per hour. <laughs> 